Welcome back guys. Today we are in the JF-17 and we're going to be dogfighting a Hornet. Uh, Hornet flown by my buddy Longshot and there is one difference here and that is that we won't be using Fox 2s mostly because he has 9Xs and I don't have anything high off bore sight so we're just going to keep it interesting and just do Fox 3s only. And you've seen in different videos these Fox 3s can do some pretty crazy things so I kind of want to do it again because I had a good time last time. So here we go for the merge one circle. He lead turned, I lead turned. And he's got his A120 off. That'll miss. And then look at that. He pulled way too hard to get that shot off. And he's kind of falling out of the sky here, which is perfect for me. All right, finally got a lock, but I'm just gotta line him up for the shot. And he went into the vertical. It's a good idea. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have the energy to follow him up there. Definitely can't point my nose like a hornet can. But you know what I do have is pretty good rudder authority in this JF-17. Okay, Fox three and. Guns, shit. Now the thing with the JF-17 is that you should basically pretend that you don't even have a gun because it's so terrible, um, but to make up for it, the SD-10s can do some pretty crazy things. So, and you've seen that in different videos and I kind of want to show you a bit here. Fox 3, I pulled a bit of lead there. We'll see if we can hit him. Mm, almost. Almost. Now I'm sitting nicely inside of his turn circle, so he's kind of screwed at this point. <laughs> And it's gonna pull a little bit more lead here. Fox three. Oh, it's tracking. Oh, <laughs> yeah. See, he was really close too. Like those ST tens, they don't need a lot of space, you know. Damn, that was pretty crazy. Wow. So the JF-17, a very beastly aircraft, uh, definitely not something you want to merge with if possible. Um, but that being said, the Hornet is pretty good also. The high AOA of the Hornet is not something to be, uh, you know, messed around with. And so here's the merge right here, one circle again. He's using the vertical. And so am I. I feel like I'm a little fast. Yeah, I'm shooting out in front. This is very bad. That means he's going to get a missile off. A120. I can get lucky here.
All right, so the M120 also very capable of doing some crazy things. Uh, you can almost see them drift into your face. It's kind of satisfying, especially when you do it to somebody else. It's not so satisfying the other way around. But, uh, you know, so if you're in an AMRAM capable aircraft and you're in a merge, don't be afraid to use your AMRAM. And I'm using massive vertical here in this uh, merge right here. Once, once again, one circle. And JF-17 not giving me the lock. So I put some guns on him to scare him a little bit, but could not get the lock there for some reason. Come on. There's the lock. Still not good parameters. Actually, right here is looking pretty good. Fox 3. Yeah, that missed. Okay, so once again, sitting in a good position. The dumping of the nose like this is going to give me all kinds of angles. So big thank you for that. All right. Still working our way to the ground. With the rudder control I have, the uh, deck transition should be very easy for me. But we'll see if that'll be necessary. He is actually moving around the circle a little bit better than I am, which is a little bit concerning. Well, it's very concerning, actually. And so here's the transition to the ground, and I come out in a very good position here. Let's get this lock, if this radar... Okay, here we go. Come on. A little bit of gunfire that missed. That I didn't have enough lead there to fire a missile. <sighs> now I could ease off on the stick a little bit and just, uh, you know, accelerate to my rate speed. But I'm having fun just pointing my nose at him and seeing him panic. <laughs> Fox 3. No track on that one. You need more lead. That missile went into the air did like a vertical it's like looping around oh shit did you see it hit the trees over there it did a like a 180 in the air you see that's commitment from a missile it went all the way around and tried to come back down and hit him again that's kind of crazy. Alright, so this is not going to work. I'm going to try to see if I can offset this a little bit. And he's going to try to climb, but he doesn't have the energy. Because he just spent so much time tightening down his turns to try to get away from my missiles. Feeling pretty good here. Come on. Nice. Fox 3. See you later, bud. Splash 1 Bandit. That's for shooting an AMRAM in my face. I think the JF-17 might be the one aircraft that can give the Hornet a seriously hard time in a merge. Um, only, like the Tomcat also, in a guns only fight, the Tomcat, very, very good. But the JF-17, something else, shit, we went two circle. That's very bad, that means we won't be able to jam the Wes. 
and it's probably going to result in a mutual kill. This is why you don't want to go two circle. You create too much separation and it allows a missile solution. Oh shit. All right, guys, let's do our quick little tag view review here. Me and the Red Jeff, Longshot, Blue Hornet, and here's the merge. All right, so you can see we're going one circle. Now, obviously, oh, and here's another thing. Um, lead turns, right, both of us. Uh, I got a little more than he did, and I'm using vertical a little more. He is staying pretty parallel or horizontal, I guess, and, you know, he's got his lead turn. And so you have to... Remember that this is a one circle merge. The reason you're doing that is because the separation is not too much. Like obviously just imagine, you know, if he did this and I did, I turned this way, right? I would be over here and you saw this in the video. He would be over here. By the time we get nose on each other, the separation is so much that we can both fire missiles at each other and we both die. So you need to go one circle with a lead turn in order to jam the WES so that the missiles are ineffective when they're fired because they're too close, right? So right here being one of them, or uh, no, it's not here. It's a little later on. Oh yeah, this is when the Jeff wouldn't give me a lock. Right, right, right. So I put some guns just to scare the shit out of them because it wasn't giving me a lock. And then you can see this downward spiral and he chaffs. Actually, this is pretty smart. I mean, I don't think the chaff worked just because he's not the moment he dropped the chaff he wasn't at a 90 degree but kind of smart it could work something could you know happen with that you know if he can pull it straight to a 90 degree angle and chaff he could beat that missile so that's interesting it's an interesting tactic he's using there and the only problem here is that he's got the constant nose down like if it was me, I would probably, I mean, he's already already in a pretty bad situation here, but I would try to at least pull the nose up a little bit and keep it, you know, in this same plane and try to make him rate fight me at a higher altitude instead of constantly dumping the nose uh, because, you know, he's just giving me angles here and he's allowing me to dump my nose. And then this massive nose dump, you can see all the angles it generates for me to just be right behind him. And so we're just going to do this downward spiral all the way to the ground. And look at the rate I'm getting, 17.3. Like JF-17 is actually kind of impressive in that. The way that it rate fights is actually really interesting. Here's 18 degrees for his 11. And here's 17 for his 16. So he's now trying to get into his uh, rate fight. And you can see here I'm pulling 18, and I am well inside of his turn circle here, taking gunshots at him. And again, I should, what I should be doing here is easing off the stick and building up to my rate speed, because I think I could probably outrate him. I think the Jeff gets one degree a second more than the Hornet. Um, and But I'm just sitting inside his turn circle, I'm just pulling hard trying to shoot these missiles at him and hey man you could maybe argue that that missile actually went for the chaff so that's pretty interesting what he's doing with the chaff it makes sense you know you're at a pretty high angle off you could be in a notch position he kind of is and then that missile just goes for chaff like that missile very clearly 
turns towards him off the rail and then bites off on chaff right here. So I think he actually spoofed this missile. So good for him. That's actually really interesting. Um, I personally wouldn't even drop chaff because, you know, I, I would think it's ineffective, but I think he just proved it wrong. Oh, right. This is that fight. Look at this. Look at this shit. So, th <laughs> so this missile's pissed that it got, you know, spoofed by chaff and it's like, oh, you want to do this shit? Here, have some of this. And it does a full 180 or a 360, I guess, and comes right back to try to hit him. And it just doesn't have enough pull at the end there. Can you imagine if it did the full 180 and hit him? Oh my god. That's pretty crazy, man. Holy shit. Alright. Well, SD-10s, uh, you know, we said in the video, they do, they do some crazy things. So, there's an example for you right there. And so I'm just sitting inside of his turn circle. So here I was trying to just get better angles, use the vertical a little bit, and uh, pull up behind him. He, this is the part where people just, and you know, I, I, I do it too all the time. When you see the guy get nice angles on your six, you just, you know, you go into panic mode. And you're like, oh shit, what should I do? And he just kind of straightens out a little bit there and it gives me the angles to get the kill. Uh, honestly, in this situation, I'm not sure there's a whole lot you can do. Like, it's not like you lose the fight here. You've lost the fight a long time ago, and you're just paying for it now. Um, I guess the only thing you could really do is try to tighten this turn down maybe a little bit more, best I can think, and hope that, you know, I can't keep up in the turn or I overshoot and then he can reverse. I don't, I don't know. I think he's pretty shit out of options at this point. Not sure there's a whole lot he could have done. I mean, reversal of the turn here would have been... A huge mistake he's still gonna die but you know he would look dumb dying so at least he doesn't do that there's no turn reversal he does try to do what I said and tries to get back into the raid fight but it's just not it's not enough all right so that's gonna be the video for today guys thank you for watching and big thank you to Longshot for helping out with this video I will see you in the next one bye guys